Hi, I'm Michael from MDC in Brisbane. We're going to go for a journey on your XT12 HR, HR meaning hard roof or high roof, whichever you prefer. To start our journey, we're going to talk about things that you do before you come and turn up to us to pick up your van. One is make sure that you've got a brake controller in your car. The brake controller will assist you in a, uh, your brakes on your van. Okay? With that, you need a 12 pin plug, which has got the bottom seven exactly the same as a normal flat seven. All right? But we have another wire going to the number 12 pin, which gives you power for your um, breakaway system. The other thing, is your 50 amp Anderson plug, so that's 5-0 Anderson plug. So that's gonna help you with your charging of your batteries. So you've got a full battery system when you get to where you're going. Also guys, you need to remove the tow ball off your car. Now as I say in that, your tongue needs to look like this when you turn up. Okay, so ball off. Okay, so we can attach our receiver that goes on the DO35 or polyblock, whichever, so therefore we can get you on the road. On hooking up from your, your van to your car, guys, we have a DO35 hitch. All the same on the XT range, okay? So basically, it's just the pin that goes underneath it. Basically, once you're over the top, with the jockey wheel, you wind down as far as it goes, as in like, once the jockey wheel becomes loose, all ball weight is here, push the red button. That means it's locked on, okay? So once this button is pushed and this little arc comes forward, that means it's locked on. To get it off, push the button down, push that back, release the button, and you open up the throat, and then you wind the jockey wheel off. But we're, we're hooking up at the moment, so button down, and then 12 pin plug, plug that in just there, secure it. Your Anderson plug, 50 amp, charging of the batteries, plug that in, and then chain. By law, you have to cross the chains, okay? So it's a, it does a support role for anything should happen. Okay, once you cross your chains, what it does, it acts as a cradle. So if anything should fail here, it falls into a cradle, so it supports the towing of the van. Obviously, you'll know it's coming off. Instead of, if the chains were um, straight up and down to there, what it could happen is it could dig in, essentially flip on the car, and that's what we don't want. All right, so hence why you've got to cross your chains. Also, breakaway unit. Now, this must be attached to your chassis not to your chains, all right? Has to be to the chassis of your car. So, easiest part on this car is around this bar that's here. If your van comes detached from the car, this, your breakaway unit, on this wire, it pulls out, okay? And then it activates the electric brakes that are in there. So the brake comes on so it doesn't career around the road or anything. Comes on until you can push that back in, it resets everything. And then, jockey wheel up. So pull the pin, swing it up, make sure those pins go back in through here, handle up, handbrake off. You're done, you're ready to go. On your jockey wheel here, guys, every time you're taking it off from the car, be it camping, at home, whatever, what I would suggest is have the wheel running crossways across your van, not vertical with the van, but crossways the van seems to support your A-frame a lot better. But also, when you're reversing on, if you miss it a little bit, you're able to move on the wheel itself, not move the whole jockey wheel. So you're moving on the wheel first. So for safety reasons and so forth, and that, make sure you're, you're having your jockey wheel run across your van. On all your caravans, guys, you have four stabilizers, okay? Two at the front, two at the rear. All right, easy is take a bit of pressure off, pull the handle, pull them down so it's nice and vertical. Get your wind down bar, pop it in there. Wind her out. Now, remembering that this is a stabilizing unit for your van. This is not a jack. This is not a jacking point, all right? Your jacking points are here, all right, just in front of that. Basically, if you did get a flat tire and so forth, put these down for safety reasons, but these are stabilizers and stabilizers only for your van.
when you're hooking up your gas, check your O-ring, just make sure it's all perfect. Put it in the place provided. Once you've got the proper seal on there, you'll go cook up the rest of your kitchen and then you'll come and turn on the gas. On your XT12HR, you do have two tanks. The two 80 litre tanks and these are the filling points. You've got one in front of the wheel and one behind the wheel arch. Okay, you got a key. It's zero one on the key. So basically these are your filling points. And remember, use food grade hose, not your garden hose, because you're going to get that tinge all the time. And make sure that if you do leave water in your, in your tanks, that you clean them out efficiently, okay? Some uh, antibacterial stuff, more water in there, go for a drive, leave for 24 hours, and make sure that you get the bacteria out, okay? In your 12HR, this is where you can hook up to mains water pressure. Obviously off there, and away you go, because then everything becomes live when you hook up your mains water. When hooking up the mains water, you've got to get a three quarter inch Nilex or Nita product to go in there so you can hook up to mains water. Now with this model, you can also with the rear tank, you can have it as gray water if you wish. And this is your flushing point. So key in, stick your finger in there to get the right size hose that you're going to flush your gray water tank. When you come down to here, there's your hose. You turn that on, basically you can flush your tank. Another little feature is a tap on the front end. You know, if you need to wash your hands, the little ones that have got dirty fingers or whatever want to wash their hands, once you've got your water pump on or plugged into mains water, right, this becomes activated. All right, so as simple as just turn and tap. And this is your external shower. You got two nozzles in there, hot and cold, and obviously the hot will come on where if you're using your hot water. And this is your little valve, basically for flow of water, okay? When you're not in use, just hang that up there. Attached to the side of your van is a little barbecue table. Now, it's imperative, guys, that you don't put a lot of weight on here. All right, 12 kilos, 15 kilos at very max that you only put on here. So again, a couple of little uh, plates, sauces, maybe a TV, whichever, but not for anyone to sit on or anything like that. So 12 to 15 kilos at the most. On your XT range, guys, through your door, this key here that's got the rounded edges and such, a big silver one, you usually got two big silver ones. This one is your door. Okay, so unlocking your door, key in, turn to the front, handle to the front, opens it up. On this particular model as well, when you do lock it, it's key in, handle to the back, turn it to the back, key back, it's locked. When you want to be locking from inside, internally, the little silver knob that's here, just turn it, it's locked. Also, when you want to open the door from the inside, because you've got to move the door handle to the front, right, it's up the inside. Don't pull it down because you're just locking it again. Up and open. When you want to separate your door, there's a little black lever here. You push up, it unlocks it, and the door separated. When you want to click it back together, you grab the top, click, bottom, click, it's all back together. And this is how you bring your step in and out. Lock it in place, slowly pick it back up and just push it underneath the van. Simple. Just on your rear of your van, there's a little hatch just beside your doorway. Black knob, open her up. This is for barbecue slides, so Sizzler Barbecue does fit very nicely. Blue tabs down, come out, and your barbecue goes on the barbecue slide. So the front of your van on the driver's side has basically two storage compartments. Whatever fits, fits. If it doesn't fit, don't force it. And in between that is your 240 in. So going to mains, um, power, 15 amp in. So this is the right hand side of your 12 HR. On all your vans, guys, you have recovery points. Now these, these recovery points are rated to three and three quarter ton. All right, so therefore, basically what you've got to do is unhook from your car and hook up to these for safety purposes because some good Samaritan might come up behind you, want to drag you out, and these can actually get ripped out because you're trying to snatch too much out of there. All right, so basically, unhook from your car, recovery points will pull you out, not a problem. On your XT12HR, on the right, Driver's side, the rear, is where your toilet cartridge is. 
So to get to your toilet, obviously you unlock it. Top button, bottom button, opens up. To fill, you need to just pop that down ever so slightly, bring that out, undo the top, water in there, fills up a little reservoir, all right, and the water level comes up here on the side, so you know when it's full and when it's empty. Also, once it's full, you put the cap on, just pull it down ever so slightly, and replace it back under there, so just swing it back away. Okay, so also when you're taking the unit out, it's just a little green level down the bottom, a little um, hatch. Basically lift that up and slide that out. You'll hear the unit itself closing this back up, all right, because it's a level inside that basically just closes that back up. When you pull that out, hit that button, depressurize, put the wheels down on the ground, pop the handle down, it extends, and all you do is go on for a walk. Once you get to your dump point, obviously nozzle up, unscrew the top, comes out. You actually physically got to pick it up and turn it upside down to get all the gear out. Once you've done that, place it back on the ground, lid back on, turn it away, pop the handle again and go for another walk, come back to your van. For the chemicals that we go in here, guys, this is a little measuring cup. So once you've done all the chemical things, guys, basically, Pick it back up and slide it back home. On your second compartment on your XT12HR is basically your kitchen. All right, undo the knob, bring it open. Above your kitchen is your pantry drawer. So two tabs down, let go once you start pulling it out. All right, whatever fits, fits. If it doesn't fit, don't force it. Tabs back down, let go, push it away, locks it away. All right, you got a secondary. Take that off. Blue tab down again, little handle here. Pulls out, let go. Bring it out. Make sure you lock it into place. Put the handle back down. This folds over to make an extension of your bench. On your 12 HR, this is your kitchen leg. All right, sends and so forth. It just goes in here. Basically, you place that underneath there like that. You lift it up. Just a couple of mils just to get the tautness about it through there and basically so you can lean on it. In your first main drawer next to the van is where you'll find your connectors for your hot and hot and cold water. You've got to connect it underneath the sink and then connect it to the water on the side of your van. Also in this little drawer as well, it's wrapped around the back and then just the end of it is sitting in the drawer, is your gas line. So basically it's just a bayonet, push in, turn to the right, that's all it is. So again, make sure that your gas is not turned on. I don't want any water pumps or gas on before it's, everything is all connected. In your 12HR, you've got a three burner Dometic. Okay, so basically the three burner here, you've got to plug it into 12 volt. The 12 volt socket is in the back here, pop that in. But what you need to, you gotta make sure it's turned on inside as well. So then you get, hit that button, Bang, 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 bite the gas, away you go, you're cooking, having dinner. On the second glass lid underneath that is where your sink is. Pop that up, pop your tap head up, attach your, your hose underneath, goes to a bucket and dispose of it properly. Right, packing down, make sure you put the tap head down, closing up. Only close this after half an hour. So this is all nice and cool. It's all cool down now, so I can close it up, folding this away. It's got little rubber stoppers on there so it doesn't scratch itself. You go grab the leg, pop that out, and make sure you disconnect all your gas and water. So when you want to slide your kitchen away, first and foremost, just make sure that these handles are down. That's why they've got the brake in them. Blue tab down, push away. Okay, locks into place, push that down, secondary lock secured. On your 12 HR, the passenger side or the left hand side of the van, at the front of it, the first compartment here is your fridge slide. Blue tab down, pull your fridge out. Okay, so you're securing your fridge guys, D shackle there, D shackle at the back so you can strap it down. So on your fridge slide, you can go through the handle, pop that through there, obviously shorten it. Basically that's just to tie it off so you don't have any excess anywhere. So once you've done that, Obviously all your tie down points are done, so front and back. 
All right, so it's nice and secure. So when you're going along the road, it's secured. On your fridge slide, you have a 12 volt socket and you have an Anderson plug socket. So this is plugged into 12 volt, it's just down here. Plug it in, happy days. Just mentioning about the fridge slide as well, guys. Yes, your kill switch, main switch, must be turned on. And also your fridge on there or else it doesn't complete the circuit, so you will not get power to your fridge, so therefore you will have hot beer and such. Your electric awning outside is hooked up to your main battery. Your button to open and close goes okay, just here on the, the rear side of it. Open, push the button, and she starts coming out. When it's coming out, if any wind is hitting you in the face, be safety conscious and just hold your awning, okay? Because what you don't want is a massive gust coming and ripping this clean off your um, caravan, all right? So two or three fingers on here. You don't have to have any pressure on it, all right? It's just there just in case. And while you're all holding on to it, guys, what you don't have to do is you don't have to run over and hit the kill, um, stop button. When it gets out to a certain point, it will stop automatically. So retrieving your legs, pop one end, slide your hand along, pop the other end, straight down. And I find it the easiest way is to stay on the inside of it, okay? Undo that, you can use that as a slide to slide it out. All right, extend it down to here. The bottom goes in, slip that back down. And once you get to the desired level, the inside one, you just tighten her up and lock her into place. With your electric awning, you've got two options for your legs, okay? So when you do pop it off, if you do not want to go back to the van, undo, straight down, you peg it to the ground. These two little duvalackies, all right? One is your manual override for electric awning, right? And this is your adjusting tool. So basically, if you pull out these wires or something happens where you can't use the electrics on your electric awning, this is your manual override. Basically, it just goes up inside here, and wind this. And then if something did happen, it comes in wrong, it gets thrown about or on the wind or something, this is your manual override for your adjusting tool. And they sit side by side like that up inside the cradle in here. Okay, obviously guys, you've got to unpeg. You loosen off here, that slides back up, all right? Have your right hand up here as you're pushing that in as you swing it up. So it slips in there. Make sure that this is square here. So it folds in nice and flush. Pop that lid. All right, it comes out. You slide that up. You lock it off. Swing that up. Make sure that that's flat at that end. Clips in. And then you come over here. You got open and close. So therefore you just push the button and close and it comes in. This cabinet above the, the, the dinette on the right hand side of your van is basically where your electrics are. You kill a switch, turn all your switches on to make everything activate, basically your, your um, circuit breakers and so forth. Uh, just above each switch there, it shows you what it, it, it turns on. So turn the kill switch on and then you activate it through there. For some reason, if it's not working, just hit the fuse at the top twice to reset above, turn it back on. Just in this compartment as well, you've got your voltmeter and your amps. Obviously, amps are what draws, volts are what you got. Just make sure at any present time you never drop below 12.2. Okay, so 12.2 is your cutoff point where you need to um, charge your van up. You're at 40%, you're endangering to losing your AGM batteries. In your 12 HR, you'll find your 200 amp batteries in a compartment underneath your bed. Your power source on the outside of your van is 15 amp. So when you get a 15 amp lead, you can plug it into the front so you got 240 in. That comes in handy, one, you want to top up your batteries, and two, if you've got aircon, you have to be running on at least a 3 kVA or 240. And don't forget, when you're plugged in here, it's only when those uh, 10 amp poles inside that they come alive. Also, when you're plugged into 240, guys, don't have your um, extension cord coiled really tight. It's got to have a little bit of space about it. So meter, meter and a half, as in loop-wise, the RCD units will trip out and such. But, so 
long loops. Now, whilst at home, if you haven't got a 15 amp at home and you need to charge it, go to Bunnings and buy yourself an adapter. It's called an amphibian adapter from 10 to 15 because you must maintain your batteries in your van. Okay, with any electrical problems, guys, what you need to do is come in and check your RCD unit. All right, see if it's tripped out. So if any faults come through, come and check this your little unit first. Okay, so also on this van, below where all your electrics are turned on, just underneath, under the dinette, is where all your DC, DC chargers, your inverters, your 240 chargers, and also for everything electrical is underneath this seat here. Okay, so your 240 charger, obviously here you've got a switch that turns it on. And this is where you can relate to. It goes through your battery type and so forth. Just at the top there, it's all calcium, gel, AGM, and so and wet battery. So therefore, if you do want to change out your batteries, you get onto that setting. So basically you can choose what's going on in there. Your IDC25, DC, DC charger, obviously that relates to solar and so forth. Charging light, that'll be in green. That means it's working. That's working off the solar. And then also if it goes to alternator, which is off your car. Okay, so if that flash is red, you mean, you know, there's a little bit of a problem. If it's flashing green at the top, you know she's working fine. And obviously your thousand watt modified inverter, you got to turn that on when you need to, when you want to use it, because what the inverter does, it converts all your battery energy to 240 energy. That's why you've got to plug into here. That's why in any van, if you've got 10 amp poles inside, basically they do not come alive until you're plugged into 240. This changes the 12 volt to 240 so you can plug things in. So this is a thousand watt modified. So basically anything that you want to run, you check on the back of any unit, if it runs more than a uh, thousand watts, well, you can't use it. If it's under that, you're gonna be fine. And you also have a master switch here. Um, if that le little lever there is popped out like that, that means things are, have tripped out. You pop that back up. All right, that's one of your master switches. And also you've got all these circuits where um, positive and negative come onto there. Um, there's a little button on the inside of here, so that's how you reset everything, okay? So you just push that button back in just to make sure it's all working fine. This cabinet above the, the, the dinette is basically where your monitor, it's on here, it's up in here. So that only becomes live when you're plugged into 240. If you're only just running your battery system, that doesn't become live, all right? It will show you how much battery power you get, but you can't change anything from the dials. Basically, you've got 10 amp um, plugs here. And again, they only come live when you're plugged into 240. Just beside that, you've got a 12 volt and USB. And that's through your battery system. So uh, if you want to do any of that, you can just do it through there. In the XT12HR, there's a table that you can attach. Okay, so the bottom handle down here, Raises the height and such, up, down, block it off, and then it swivels around at the top. So you can have it in, you can undo that and take it all the way out, not use it at all if you like, if you want to get into bed and such, but this is your movable table and your HR. When you come in the rear door, on the right hand side of that is a little bit of bench space, and in that bench space is an internal sink. So it's hot and cold running water out of this one as well. So basically it's just convenience tucked away in there bench space, daytime, nighttime, dishes and teeth. Your two big cabinets here. The top cabinet is basically for hanging space. You got a little mirror on there, you want to even do your hair, whatever. But a hanging space, so it's just storage. Underneath is basically where, a little bit of storage, but where your hot water system is. Now where your hot water system is, um, your little uh, red uh, black button on the side there, that is where you turn it on. So obviously gas on and so forth and then you just flick her up. But you still gotta have it turned on at the front. Again, with all the electrics and anything that needs a 12 volt spark and such, right, you need to turn it on at the front or else your gas ain't gonna light. Once you've turned your Truma hot water system on inside, this is your exhaust. Open this up. Now it shows you how to take this off. Basically push your thumbs in, it splits the top, it comes off. So you must release this as soon as you turn your hot water system on. So once you've lit your hot water system and you've taken your cover off, 
what I would ask you to do guys is basically come and check it at two minutes and eight minutes. Come and check with the back of your hand if heat's coming out, all good. If it's not coming out, redo it. Because basically with the lines that aren't purged properly, it'll light because an air block in behind it, it's gonna go out. So you might have to go and do it two or three or four times. So the air, um, air comes out of it and the gas comes through the lines. With the internal windows, guys, it's got little gray buttons there. You must push that button in and move the handle. Push the button in and move the handle. Please don't just yank on it because you'll break the internal lock, all right? The window itself goes out to three positions, all right? Once you hear the click, stop. You go too far, you release it, it'll come back in. All right, so therefore we go out to do that. I released it. Once you feel the click, stop. I want to release it, bring it back in, all right? You'll hear that click. Well, you know it's locked back into place. Also, when you close and guys, there is two little latches in here where you can go into the center or go completely on the inside of it. Right? If you go into the center, it leaves a little gap for ventilation, all right? So at night time, if you want a little bit of air, fine. But when you're traveling, it's got to be on the inside one, the internal one, or else you're just going to fill up with dust. Also, with your window, you have a fly screen that comes down and you have a privacy screen that comes up, which you can go half and half if you wish. Just clip them together as such. All right, separate. Just go slowly. Don't be in a rush. You're on holidays. You don't need to be in a rush. Just push them away slowly. That's all you need to do. With your shower hatch, guys, what it is, you got a little button on here, turns the light on, you got a little swivel. So just turning off that, opens up the hatch. You got a neutral switch in there, you've got an external fan that takes that out, or you got a one that blows in, all right? So you can just have it any way you want. In each one of the vans, they come with a smoke alarm. So that's compulsory, you have to come with a smoke alarm, but it's up to you as the individual to make sure you change your batteries out, all right? so. Yes, it comes with a smoke alarm, but you have to change it out. It's placed in certain places in the roof. All right, each van is a different spot, but you'll have a smoke alarm in every van. Also in each van, guys, I mean, one of the drawers, there'll be a little booklet, all right? Each booklet will contain whatever the van has got, be it hot water system, diesel, air cons, radios, blah, blah, blah. There's a little satchel here. It's got everything in there. So just have a read up of it. All right, and then if you need to, you go to your user's manual and your troubleshoot and so forth from there. On your caravans, guys, it doesn't really matter if it's a 12, 14, 15 or whichever. Your tire pressures and your wheels and everything is all part about being maintenance, right? So therefore, you've got to make sure you maintain everything. Each van has its own manual that you can download. So you can get the checklist off there and go through it so that you know what you've got to do at any particular time. Okay, your wheel pressures, all right? I always say, whatever you're running on the end of your car, so it might be 40. You may have to go up to 45, you may have to go up to 50, 55, depending how you weigh your van. If there's too much weight in the back of it, you might have to up your pressures in your tire. Basically, you just got to maintain your tire pressures at all time. You go on the beach, you drop them to a point, when you come back on the bitumen, you'll take it up, all right? Also, your wheel studs, 14 mil wheel studs, they're the biggest ones on the market. You've got to keep tension on them. We supply with wheel brace, so basically it's making sure it's taut, but not ridiculously like jumping on the wrench itself. So make sure it's tight, and you've got to check it uh, at 50, 150, 500. But also, you've got to check it every day once you're traveling. If you're going on corrugations for two or three or four days, you check it every morning. It's about a safety thing. On every one of the vans, you have a plaque on the drawer bar that shows you how to do your wheel nuts up. So it's on a star pattern, okay? You don't go around any clockwise or clockwise, whichever. It's a star pattern, so it goes on evenly. Bearings, all right? If you do any salt water, beach work, anything like that, check them more regularly than 5,000, 10,000, okay? It's common sense on all of this maintenance through your vans. It doesn't matter if it's a 12, 
up to a 22. It's make sure you do the maintenance. Teamwork at MDC makes your dream work. So make sure you go out, enjoy yourself, make memories and escape with confidence.